Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, now to his altar draw near. Joining in glad adoration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. We celebrate this time, the 17th Sunday in the ordinary time. And Jesus, once again, would like to remind us of uh, the value, the importance of prayer. And at the same time, revealing the very core of who he is. So that we may be worthy celebrating this sacred mystery let us call to mind our sins and ask his kindness and mercy. Together we say, I confess yes, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. True my fault, true my fault, true my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the most blessed ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of, of goodwill. Will. We praise, praise you, we, we bless you, you we adore you, you we glorify you, you. we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Son Lord God, God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing is firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty 
would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all, the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted, Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me, the Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having, having forgotten us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You have received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think most of us would agree that shopping at a garage sale or perhaps maybe a swap meet is not like walking into Walmart. Certainly if you're going to go there to buy a fishing rod or maybe a pair of socks. You see at a garage sale, most of us would expect that these items are gonna be purchased after a lively bargaining session between buyer and seller. This is why we find ourselves maybe a little bit surprised by Adam's intense back and forth with God in much the same way. Of course, there are many meaningful differences that can be found in these usual types of bargaining sessions, and this is no exception. 
because here the differences are in a couple of key areas, the most important being which the relationship. There is a relationship between God and Abraham. There's also a function that leads to intent and then to a final outcome. You see, by comparison, let's begin by starting with, let's say, a typical swap meet type of exchange. You see, at a swap meet, it's expected that the buyer isn't going to pay more than the, what the seller is asking as his full price. So if by some chance the buyer does wind up paying full asking price without saying, let's say, an extra word, the seller, hmm, he might actually think that he's gotten away with something. He might think it's a little strange. And so for a second or two, he might actually feel a little bit of guilt about receiving the extra money, but only for a moment or two. But on the other hand, if the buyer were a sophisticated, let's say, antique or art dealer who actually knew that this odd-looking little porcelain blue and white finger bowl was something that uh, was, say, selling for $5 and was actually one of the last remaining items from the Ming Dynasty, clearly he probably wouldn't care about the relationship with the seller. He probably wouldn't care about each other's intent or their mutual lack of conscience. You see, in this rather tawdry but actual real-life example of an exchange, clearly there is no meaningful relationship between these parties, and their intent is as self-centered as the outcome. So the first notice noticeable difference that we find here, it points to the relationship, the actual relationship between Abraham and God. They have one. They know each other well. So what's really going on behind the scenes here? Well, at first glance, the Genesis narrative really only appears to be about an impending destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, but that's not the full intent. God's full intent here is to test Abraham's sense of justice. You see, just prior to speaking to Abraham, in the passage that comes before the one that we heard in our gospel reading, God says, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? I have singled him out to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Well, this paraphrasing of this verse is really a test to see what Abraham is going to do. Will he, for example, relish in the forthcoming divine punishment? Or will Abraham actually respond with mercy and fairness, concern for what is just and what is right? Abraham, of course, as we know, passes with flying colors by showing that he not only understands the need for divine response to sin, but he is also as concerned as God is too that divine punishment be used only as a means of last resort. So in this case, the only righteous ones that could be found were Abraham's nephew Lot, his wife, and their two daughters. Still, if you think that this is the complete part of the story, it's not. There's yet another layer that lies just beneath this one. And if it's here, it's right here in the first reading that pours light onto it in the transgressions that are mentioned by Paul in his letter to the Colossians, and especially in Luke's gospel, on how Jesus teaches not only his disciples, but us how to pray. You see, just like the past two Sundays, these are important Sundays because as this part of the old, let's say, Old Testament and New Testament coming together, it teaches us and gives us key layers of how our relationship with God, our relationship with the Son and the Holy Spirit is important to us. First, as Paul points out, it begins with our baptism in Christ's death and his resurrection, since it is the beginning of our relationship in the Trinity. Baptism, of course, is the beginning of our share in the divinity of Christ. It's the doorway to our share in the kingdom of God and, of course, our relationship, our daily relationship through the Holy Spirit. Second, even though Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, we find, is different from what we're more familiar with in Matthew, Jesus is still teaching us how to pray in the same manner in which he taught his disciples. 
Here's the important point, though. Prayer is really meant to lead us out of ourselves and into a right relationship with the Father. This doesn't mean that we cannot or should not pray for those things that we need, because we can and we should. It only means that our prayer is truly meant to take us to a place outside of ourselves. And that's how we heard it with Abraham. Therefore, what appears to be an intense bargaining session between Abraham and God is really just prayer. Even though it seems that Abraham is bartering with God on what he wants, he does so in a context of prayer that is always centered on God. There's no doubt that Abraham, of course, is alarmed by the news that God is ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and possibly his family, his relatives along with them. So in this regard, his prayer probably is, doesn't seem any different from what the prayer might be from you and I when we pray for the well-being and health of our friends and our family. But in the end, the question that we ask is, did Abraham change God's mind? Was Sodom and Gomorrah preserved? Why did Abraham stop at 10? Why not five? Why not four? That's when the light bulb moment goes off. You see, Abraham realizes, just like you and I do, that God already knew that he wasn't going to find 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. He wasn't going to find 45 or 40 or 30 or 20 or even that 10. Thus so Abraham realizes Sodom truly really is wicked. God is perfectly just in destroying it. And that's when Abraham comes around to understanding what God's understanding is. What is God's will? What initially looks like God relenting and changing his mind turns out to be a way of bringing Abraham and us now into God's understanding. We're taught to ask, we're taught to seek, and to knock, and it will be given to us. We heard that in our gospel reading. And so we often become frustrated when the answers that we're looking for are not immediately forthcoming, or they may even fall short of expectations. Yet this true light of Abraham's experience shows us that God uses the content of the prayer as much as he uses the process of the prayer, the process of asking, the process of seeking, and the process of knocking. Through him, with him, in him. Those are the words that we're going to hear at this Mass, just like we have heard at all of the Masses. And it brings us around to God's thinking, through him, with him, and in him. Here's what actually, though, is happening now between God and Abraham. The result of prayer, then, is how God changes us, not vice versa, to see what he sees and then to ask, to seek, and to knock for what he has already prepared for us and what he wants for us. Let me leave you with maybe this short example. There was a man, probably a father and a husband, He's sitting in a hospital room. He's waiting for the results of his scan. This scan is designed to literally light up all the areas of his body that are affected by cancer. So he utters this prayer. He says, Dear Lord, I humbly ask you to please give me five more years. And he pauses and he thinks and he changes it to three more years. And he pauses again and thinks, all right, what I really need is two more years. Lord, I just need two more years so that I can attend my daughter's wedding and my son's graduation. Was it wrong for this man to pray this way? No, of course not. But it also depends on whether we are willing to accept God's answer in the end. So let's listen to the prayer offered perhaps maybe a slightly different way. He says, Lord, you have heard my prayer. You've heard the prayer of my wife, my family, and my friends, so many others. I've asked you to, for the things that, that I want. Instead, you have trained my heart that it is not about me, nor the remaining years that I have. It is about you and what you want for me, for my life, 
and for the faith of those who were praying for me. I know it is about you being glorified in my body as well as in my life and in my death. Lord, I do not pretend to understand all that this means, but you have brought me to the place outside myself that this is all that I desire. I am in your hands. I have always been in your hands, and I worship you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You see, in this way, prayer is meant to take us to a place that is outside ourselves, and that place is our relationship with the Father. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. We say, I believe, believe in, in one God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus tells us to ask and we shall receive, and so we bring the needs of the world to our loving God. For our church leaders, that fervent prayer remains the foundation for all they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they work toward the day when no one will be without their daily bread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents and the elderly, that they may be loved and cared for, and that the wealth of their knowledge and experience may be valued by younger generations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, that we persist in our prayer, trusting in the loving God that cares for us in all of our needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those on our website's vigil light list and whose names are written in our book of prayer intentions and especially for the people of Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may experience God's healing of body, mind, soul, and spirit, especially all those who are suffering from COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they join the communion of saints praising God forever. And for Mermedios Serrano, whose one-year death anniversary we remember this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also include intentions of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, your mercy reaches to the ends of the earth. Hear our prayers and bring us closer to you. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fails me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. 
Where streams of living water flow With gentle care he leads me And where the verdant pastures grow With heavenly food he feeds me. Perverse and foolish I have strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid and home rejoicing brought me. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all of this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, the through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, host, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in once more, giving thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, Lord, for by your cross and resurrection, and resurrection you have, have set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that 
partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistants, John and Ramon, the whole order of bishops, the clergy, the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse Joseph, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with each one of you. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. Loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord. Bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. 
loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. Slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of the loving and merciful God descend upon you, remain with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before Thee, all on earth Thy scepter claim, all in heaven above adore Thee, infinite Thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign.